welcome to this week's video. My name's Molly, but my friends call me Mole, and I run a small sewing business from home called Frog and Mole. Okay, so guys, you may or may not be aware, but it's actually Fashion Revolution Week this week. So it runs from Monday the 22nd to the 28th of April, which also coincides with Earth Day and other environmental movements. So the Fashion Revolution is a movement that was kind of founded after the Rana Plaza disaster where lots of garment workers lost their lives and were injured um, making clothes for us guys, which, um, yeah, is not good, is it? So really, this movement is kind of there to get us to ask questions and kind of be curious about all the things around us and where they came from. So they have suggested a really fun challenge, which I'm so excited to start. So it's called Hashtag Alternative, and it's kind of based on the premise of fabric hauls, but it's kind of a bit more of an eco-friendly angle. So rather than going out and buying lots of clothing, the idea is to kind of look at the things that either you already have, or to shop secondhand, or to sort of DIY things, upcycle vintage, um, to hire things, etc. So really exciting. So I've decided to go for, it's probably, you know, super obvious to you guys, because I love upcycling, but kind of like DIY secondhand. So this is gonna be part one because I have a feeling these are going to be very long videos. So before I get cracking with my video I'm going to hit you with two very interesting facts which might give you food for thought. So the first one is, I'm going to read them because I know I'm going to get them wrong, um, the average British woman hoards £285 worth of clothes they will never wear, the equivalent of 22 outfits hanging in your wardrobe or 30 billion unworn clothes. I'm like Oh, think of all of those upcycling potentials. Oh, fantastic. So guys, if you have got anything hanging in your wardrobe which needs a little love, or perhaps you don't like certain aspects of them, um, you can always upcycle things, um, alter them to make them fit you slightly better. I mean, there are loads of options. Um, upcycling is really, really fun, so guys, go out and do it. And then the second fact I'm gonna hit you with is, did you know it takes 2,720 litres of water to make one T-shirt? See, I didn't know that. I thought that was very interesting. So I'm gonna leave a link down below for you guys if you're interested in any of these statistics. Okay, so let's crack on with the video. Now, I've got a few bits that I wanna show you guys because this is kinda gonna set up the videos. So we're gonna go for part one today. So, I went to the charity shop a couple of weeks ago and I found these really nice Levi's 501s. And I'm gonna pop them on for you in a minute, but there is no way I'm gonna squeeze my ass into these. They are super, super small. I think when I saw Waist 28, I was, yeah, a bit too optimistic. So, um, my plan is, I also picked up a second pair of jeans from the charity shop, um, a slightly darker pair. So, I've got, I'm having a real love affair with denim at the moment. So, I have two pairs of denim here, and my plan is, I did first think, oh, I'm gonna upcycle them and make a really cool pair of flared jeans, but if you've seen my last video, which I will link here, jeans I don't think are my thing. So, I think I'm going to make a skirt with these. So I'm gonna show you a few bits of inspiration that I found. Um, so first I'm gonna just scroll through my Pinterest with you guys for you to see, but I found some really nice skirts. So I think I'm gonna go for, um, I think, it might change, a midi skirt with um, a fringe detail and a bit of stenciling, which I'm also gonna show you, which I'm quite excited about. So if we just scroll through these pictures here, um, yeah, so basic midi skirt. So this one here is a really cool upcycled skirt. And um, this one, I mean, you can really see all the different pairs of trousers in there. That one is very interesting. And then a few of them, they've actually left the splits open in the front of the skirts. And so this embroidery, embroidery here kind of really inspired me. Um, and my stenciling, yeah, so that is basically it. So, um, my inspiration also came from, so I don't know if you've heard of Alabama Channing, but they are a, an American company that um, are also eco-focused or sustainable, and they make the most beautiful textiles, like, oh my God, so beautiful. So I thought I would try and give it a go myself. So this is what I've come up with. So what I'll do is I will link a couple of pictures here for you guys to kind of see um, the work that they do. And then this is a work I do. So I've used um, offcuts of denim that um, were left over from an upcycling project a couple of weeks ago. And so what I did is I used Photoshop and I kind of just 
played around and came up with a few designs. So what I will do, I'm gonna do a separate video, I think, just to show you how to make stencils and how easy it is. And you know, you don't need to be an artist because I am not an artist. I can't draw for shears. So you guys will be absolutely fine. So these are a few of the things that I have come up with. So, um, Hopefully you guys can see that. So basically Alabama Channing, they do a few things, but reverse reverse applique is kind of what caught my eye and it's something that I've done before, but I've never done it with denim. Um, they seem to mainly do it in jersey, but I thought doing it in denim might be really effective. So I used um, Myla to cut out my stencil. So I use my um, Cricut or cry cut machine, but you can do this by hand with a stencil. So don't let that hold you guys back. Um, so basically, yes, I printed out a selection of stencils here. Um, and then I put them onto some denim. So the first one I sh I'll show you is, um, I guess maybe it was like inspired by moons and things, I don't know. So this is the first one that I came up with. So I have um, used, let me just show you the paint I use. So I use some um, Jacquard textile, style, uh, textile color, which isn't great. It's um, slightly transparent, so you can apparently get ones which are um, opaque but I didn't so I'm kind of working with what I already had so yeah the first one is something like this um, which I really really like so I've gone for um, a red fabric paint and then basically all you do is I free motion embroidery around the shapes and then cut them out I think it's really really effective so um, that's my first sample and then I did um, dots dots polka dots, circles, I don't know what you call them. They kind of like eggs to me. Um, and then I didn't finish all of these because these were just slightly too small. So this one is kind of, I don't know, abstracty, hearts and flowery things. And then my lovely moons again. So basically the backs of them, I just had to use whatever fabric I had so they don't completely um, align. So this one, I've actually hand, hand sewn that one on just to see how that one looked. And then this one was way too small, so I won't be using that one on my final design. So yeah, those are kind of like my inspiration. So I think what I will actually do, rather than using the red um, paint, I'm gonna use the navy, because I think it's slightly more subtle. So that's what I'm gonna go for, I think. Navy or navy or navy or navy. Okay, I can't draw, like I just said. This is kind of what I'm going for. Hopefully you guys can see that. But basically, um, it's like a midi skirt here and then I'm gonna go for, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to put a V in the front because I'm gonna be um, sort of, I'm gonna, I need to unpick it to see whether this will work. And then what I kind of wanted to do is do some red embroidery on the pockets and then do the reverse applique in each corner of the skirt um, along the side panel because like I said, those trousers are really small. So I think I'm gonna have to put a panel in the side. And then um, I'm gonna put some reverse applique on the pockets in the back. So that is my plan guys. So that is kind of like, part one of where I'm up to. So the next stage is, as it's bank holiday and it's lovely, 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 glorious sunny weather, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna grab my razor and I'm gonna unpick both pairs of jeans. So let me just show you these on so you can see what we're working with. Okay guys, so um, number one, sorry if you can hear my neighbour, he is currently strimming. Number two is I've managed to squeeze these on, but oh my gosh, there's like, I mean, what size is 28? There's like, ugh, no way. So this is a perfect example for you guys of how you can find something and hopefully turn it into something that's wearable or perhaps you've got something in your closet which you used to wear and maybe you can't fit into anymore. Don't let it, don't let it hold you back because these are like, I mean, there's just no way. There's no way you could even slim down into, well, I could slim down into wearing these. Um, so the idea is to, um, pop the slightly darker, the indigo color um, jeans, a panel into the side here, or possibly into the front where um, there should be, a v I think there'll be a V, because obviously these are so small, I think I'm gonna have to put lots of fabric in. But yeah, these are kind of my trousers, guys. Okay guys, so that's it for part one. Trousers are too tight. I've got my stencils um, and my designs. So the next thing to do is to head out into the lovely sunshine, pick these mother truckers apart with my razor and then come back to you kind of showing you all the pieces that I've managed to salvage and the next stage. Okay, see you all in part two. Bye.